Now you say when you set out again from Cape mm. Town, the sail was different, the experience was different. You actually felt lonely. Yeah, yeah, you know. There. I'm not exactly sure, but for, it was kind of, I'd never really had a hard time with being alone on the water until I left Cape Town. It was kind of a new experience. It wasn't like when I'd left Marina Del Rey when I was kind of almost relieved to be out and, you know, away from all the craziness of life at home. It was like during those three months alone at sea and then stopping in Cape Town, I'd really learned to appreciate people so much more. And then having to leave them all, it was kind of hard. And, you know, it, once I got out, I was hit pretty hard by a lot of storms. And, you know, it wasn't, it was pretty rough. Do you think the Lord was dealing with that introvert? That little shy girl in there? <laughs> yeah, I definitely think he was, he was, you know, turning some of that around. Well, you certainly managed to get a lot of attention within a very short space of time on that return to sea. What happened? Yeah, well, about three weeks out, I was in this pretty gnarly storm. I had 60 knots during the day and 30 foot seas. It, it was pretty fun. It's like the three-story swells yeah. that we read about in here. I mean, surfing down those in a little bit, it's fun. But, you know, the storm actually died down during the end of the day. It was dark out, and I was hit by a rogue wave after the storm had pretty much passed. And so it literally... 360. 360. Yeah. The, the keel, now my husband was explaining this to me, that, that that keel is weighted so that it will right itself. Yeah, yeah, the boat's designed to self-right. So, you know, you roll over, your mast comes off, so there's not all that pressure of the water in the sails, and you come back upright, but, you know, without a mast, you're a little bit stuck. You don't have hope of going anywhere. Yeah. So we had a lot of people, this is where we got on praying ground for sure, uh, was that March 30th? Was that crisis uh, date? What was the date? June 10th. June 10th. June 10th. There's a lot of dates in here. Yeah. Um, you're in the remotest corner of the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. and you got people coming at you from the air, from the sea. Um, how scared were you? You know, that's a, it's a tough thing when you're on the ocean because you start to get really scared. You start to think, you know, what if nobody's coming? What what's going to happen out here? But you, you realize that you have to stop thinking that. You know, if you start thinking that, you just, you know, you'll lose it. And so I did stuff to keep my mind off of it. I worked around on the boat. I found things to do, just to, anything to keep my mind from thinking about that. Did you pray? Yeah, definitely. In fact, I, I was sitting on my chart desk and, you know, I was starting, you know, the worry was starting to rise up again. And I sat there and I just prayed, you know, God, if, if anybody's coming, just let me know. And almost laughed at myself. I'm like, what's he going to do? Just, he's not going to send like a homing pigeon to come find, you know, <laughs> let me know, hey, we're coming. But as I was praying, I heard an engine. Uh, I jumped outside and there was a plane, this great big passenger plane where, you know, I didn't think any planes could get out to where, where I was and there one was. It's an amazing story. Um, your mom would name that baby boy, <laughs> your little brother, after the French sailor the fisherman, yeah, who was in the dinghy with two other men that came to get you off Wild Eyes, yeah, and uh, on the way to safety. Mm, the, the captain of the boat that came picked me up. It was so is it Paul Louis? Is your yeah. brother both <laughs> names? Paul Louis. Paul Louis. Um, I was moved to read of the welcome home by your family, and even the little siblings who wouldn't have understood what you were doing <laughs> were all over you. So happy to have you back home. Yeah. And I, I just think, what if? What if you'd perished out there in that wild adventure? Mm. What impact would that have had on your family? Yeah, you know, I, it's, kind of, it's a thought that's there, but you know, I'm here, and so, I don't know, I guess it's best not to think about that. Well, you haven't been afraid to include everything in the book. Dr. Laura Schlesinger suggested that your parents should be jailed yeah. for letting you go. I, I mean, a couple of factors here that, of course, always come up. The teenage brain, uh, this isn't personal, Abby. <laughs> the teenage brain is not developed to the place of really grasping big picture consequences. It's just a fact. Yeah. yeah. And the cost of a rescue is uh, over the moon. And you happen to be in a season of <laughs> history where it just seemed like teenagers were launching from everywhere to do very risky things. 
Would you let your child do this? It would depend. You know, I wouldn't suggest every kid go sail around the world. I wouldn't suggest, definitely wouldn't. I was raised for it. I was raised, you know, with high expectations, and I, I expected high things of myself. My parents expected high things of me, and, you know, at 16, I was ready to take on the challenge. And, you know, I know a lot of people say that I was immature, my brain wasn't fully developed, but, I mean, I sailed over halfway around the world. If people are still saying I wasn't experienced enough, then I really don't have anything to say to them. You're an adventurous family. What, what will you do next? Next? Learn how to drive. <laughs> no plans to sail. I lots of plans to sail. But, um, but not you're going to go around the world again. Oh, well, I haven't been all the way around the world yet. I'm definitely going to sail around the world one day. You're make it all the way it. around. Not succeeding is not the same thing as failure. Yeah. I'm quoting you. <laughs> you're looking as if you're hearing that for the first time. <laughs> I thought that was quite quite a statement. Not succeeding is not the same thing as failure. Well, a lot of people look at success as, you know, reaching a final destination. But, I mean, I sailed halfway around the world, and I'd feel pretty bad if I was writing off that huge accomplishment as a failure. And, you know, really, success to me is more every little step you take towards a big goal. I mean, whether or not you actually reach that in the end, the fact that you've tried, the fact that you've put forth a good effort, and you've made it as far as you did, that's... You know, each little step is a success all in itself. Well, you said, I am 12,000 miles wiser, more resilient, with more faith in God. And really what you said is almost a quote. This was my calendar <laughs> for today. Can you believe this? Ralph Waldo Emerson, to finish the moment, to find the journey's end in every step of the road, to live the greatest number of good hours is wisdom. It's true. God bless you as you live fully in all the moments. Now that you are all of 17, Abby. <laughs> and your book is available, Amazon.com. Unsinkable, a young woman's courageous battle on the high seas. This is a journal, uh, and we get everybody's viewpoint. We've got the, mm. the comments from land, from sea. Um, the whole journey very well chronicled. Yeah. Thank you for coming and sharing some highlights with us. Yeah, thanks for having me.